tinnitus. 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 Welcome to the Fireside. My name is Jake. Thank you so much for joining me here today for this uh, machine review. I don't do these very often. Before I start it though, I want to say go Grizz. It is playoff time. We're ready to watch these Memphis Grizzlies beat down the Lakers. I think that's who they're going to end up playing first round. And um, you know, that's what we do here in Memphis, Tennessee. We win basketball games. So like I mentioned, I'm going to do a machine review. You can see here this guy, the AI Tanitas. Tanitas. I don't really know how you would pronounce it. I think it's Tanitas. Uh, I've had this machine now. It was sent to me by the by the company. Uh, I've had the machine now for probably seven months. I think I got it last October, and this is mid-April. So I've had it six or seven months, and I I guess that I just have gotten to the point where I want to really get familiar with the machine before I do a review. A handful of reviews that I've done, I've done immediately after trying the machines out. And um, I don't know that that's the best way to, to do it. Another thing that I want to mention is that I'm not really interested in doing machine reviews regularly going forward. I think there are people who are way more geared towards that, particularly my friend Ty Pilata, uh, who have just more of an engineering mind and are better suited to, to do machine reviews than I am. But this one, after using it for six or seven months, I thought was worth sharing for a couple of reasons. And so I'm gonna do that now. The first thing uh, that really makes this machine unique is this case right here that is actually a UV sterilizer. So you can see, if I've got it in frame, there's a little button right here. I don't have it plugged up. But there are these little um, LED or UV lights that are all over the inside of, the, uh, of this little case. And they, over about a five or six minute period, it will uh, fully UV sterilize the machine. And the cool thing about it is, is it doesn't just work with this machine. Like I can put my NUMA 4 in there. Uh, really, you can buy this case separately, I think, from the machine. So you, they, you can buy the case for about 100 bucks. I don't know the price of the machine. I think it's around six or $700 US. But um, anyways, the first thing that I thought was really cool was this little UV sterilizer. Now, the machine itself uh, comes in two modes, or it's, it's one machine, but it allows for two different modes. You have, let me go ahead and turn it on here. You turn it on just by holding this guy down until it lights up. The voltage goes from about five, I think it drops all the way down to five and goes up to, I don't know, I don't know what it goes up to. I tend to use it around six and a half to seven and a half, depending on what I'm doing. But once it's running, it's a very quiet machine. Let's see if you can hear it. Hear that? Pretty quiet. Uh, once it's running, you can change the voltage with this little knob or if it's not running, you touch the top to turn it off, you can switch it between two different modes. You have F mode, which is kind of like a direct drive, like a spinner with no give at all, and then an E mode, uh, which has some type of a digital give. So there's no actual mechanism, like a mechanical thing that buffers or gives in, or allows any give. It's done through a chip. And uh, the company didn't give me a lot of information, I guess it's proprietary about how that's done, uh, but it's a it does kind of have a a natural kind of a give feeling. It, it, it's meant to mimic a little more of a coil machine, I think. Um, I don't know that it feels a lot like a coil, but you'll get used to it as you go. You kind of feel the machine um, kind of uh, getting, giving a little more rebound as it hits the skin. I've gotten to where I basically use it in the F mode, uh, just in the regular, the regular uh, direct drive kind of spinner mode. When it's in that mode, it reminds me a little bit of the Bishop uh, shader. I don't know if you guys have uh, ever used the Bishop shader. Let me use this camera over here. It reminds me a little bit of the Bishop shader that I've been using for years. Now it's a good bit larger than the Bishop, you can tell. It's uh, way, way taller. Uh, it's a pretty substantial feeling machine. It's a good size. I'll show you along with a few other machines that I use regularly. So this is the Scorpion by Ink Machines that I use quite a bit. And it's a decent bit bigger than the, than the Scorpion as well. Definitely a lot uh, larger in circumference diameter than the Scorpion. Um, 
the E mode on the AI Tinnitus kind of reminds me, if you've ever used the Scorpion, Scorpion it reminds me of using the Scorpion uh, with, the, with the dial set back uh, about three quarters, if you've, ever used, if you've ever used this before. I don't know if you can see that at all, but with the Scorpion, you basically turn this dial to allow how much give that it, uh, that it allows. Uh, and I think that the E mode on the Tinnitus, AI Tinnitus, is around three or four clicks off of full hard on the on the Scorpion. So if you if that makes any sense to you, if you've ever used the Scorpion, uh, then that might be helpful. Um, I'll show you kind of size wise based on a couple of others. This is the original NUMA 4. So you can see this is a pretty big machine. I, I, I've, I've not used the Cheyenne Soul Nova, but I, I think it's about the size of the Soul Nova. Uh, and then finally, the newer NUMA, this is my primary liner. Uh, the newer NUMA uh, Macro that just came out, which is a little bit bigger than the original NUMA 4. And it's still, you know, a good bit bigger than the, than the Macro. Now, I do not get the same type of punch lining out of, uh, out of the AI Tinnitus that I do the NUMA 4. I prefer the NUMA 4 for lining, uh, whether it, either, either of these NUMA 4s, whether it's the original NUMA 4, or whether it's this Macro that just is a torquier machine. Uh, those still, to me, if you liked the feel, if you came up using coils and you liked the feel of lining with a coil, this is still my go-to for lining if you want that kind of uh, coil punchiness. But now that said, the AI Tinnitus, uh, I'll show you in this, uh, in this quick little video that I made tattooing my friend Heather, that the AI Tinnitus is perfectly capable of lining. I do line with it in the F mode, in the kind of direct drive mode. I feel like I have to kind of work more off of the uh, tip of the tube rather than the tip of the needle. I, I'm someone who's always liked to kind of just graze the skin with the needle and really work off the tip of the needle rather than burying the needle down to the tube. I do find that I need to run the needle down to the tube with this machine, but if that's the way you like to work anyways, which a lot of traditional tattooers like to work off of the tube rather than the tip of the needle, uh, then I don't think you'll have any problems at all with this. I think in this example that I'm showing you, I'm lining probably around 6.5 to 6.7. And you see that I'm moving my hand pretty slowly. That's just kind of the way that I line. I like to line slowly and methodically. My hand doesn't move really all that fast. Now I'll show you here as I start to do some color work in the hat of the green eggs and ham that I'll, I'll actually do a little bit of color work with a round shader uh, in the F mode. And then I will switch it over to the E mode and do a little bit of color packing uh, in the E mode. I don't change really anything other than those two modes. And you can see whenever I um, cut in and, and show the, the results of both that it's, it's just a matter of your hand getting used to it. Either mode is capable of lining, shading, and coloring. Um, it, you just, it's just a matter of how you move your hand, how you like to move your hand. Like I said, I've just gotten over six or seven months, I've gotten to the point where I really only use this in F mode. And it's just because that, that's just what felt more natural to me. I'm, I'm getting, and maybe the NUMA has trained me a little bit, uh, to not depend so much on the recoil of the, of the machine to get saturation, but depend more on the feeling of my hand uh, getting the saturation. So using a varying pressure based on the, the feedback that I'm getting from the skin. I don't know that there's a wrong or a right, uh, just whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, the dial on this is, as far as adjusting needle depth, is pretty straightforward. It works just like a lot of uh, the ones that you see uh, other manufacturers using where you just kind of turn the this little area of the dial. I'll show you on this other camera. Keep forgetting I have two cameras. I will say that whenever the machine is fully wrapped and I've got Coban wrapped up a good ways up, sometimes I do have to kind of grab hard on the back here to, to turn. It's not difficult to turn. It's just not a very big dial to turn. So you kind of have to find it. Uh, not a big deal. You get used to that pretty quickly. I prefer these types of, of setups where the dial is actually in the back uh, to adjust needle depth. The um, uh, the NUMA is kind of the same way, the dial's in the back. This is my preferred method of needle depth adjustment rather than uh, up at the, put those down, rather than up at the front of the machine. But a lot of them do it up at the front of the machine. The Bishop does the, at the front of the machine. Uh, so it's, 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 you know, personal preference, I guess. I just personally like the, uh, the dial at the rear of the machine for, for adjusting needle 
depth. Fun fact about this tattoo, and here's the, um, the finished tattoo that I did on Heather. This tattoo, uh, the green eggs and ham design, is actually the reason that the Fireside Tattoo Network even exists. It's the first tattoo, this design, is the first tattoo that I ever got. I got it in 94, 95 from some guy, a biker that had been tattooing forever. And it was terrible, it scabbed up, it scarred, it all fell out. And I thought, man, I can probably do this. And so that is what kind of uh, pushed me to go and seek out an apprenticeship and start to tattoo back in the back in the mid 90s was this exact design and someone who did a pretty crappy job of executing it. And so I wanna thank whoever that artist was that gave me my first tattoo for giving me the confidence to get into this myself. So, so I was excited to be able to do the same design on my friend Heather uh, 26, 27 years later uh, and uh, kind of bring it full circle. Mine, on the other hand, will not fall out. That's gonna be a solid tattoo. So yeah, the AI Tinnitus. Overall, I've been using it regularly. I like it. I like the size. I like the weight. Uh, I like the interface. Now it does have an app. It comes with a little case that'll hold an iPad or a phone, or not a case, but a stand that'll have hold an iPad or a phone. I haven't really found any use for the app. You can make the same adjustments on the app that you can make on the machine itself. So I just prefer to make them on the machine. Uh, it also has some type of a basic built-in scheduler. So if you want to use the software that comes with the app to schedule your clients and things like that, uh, you can look into it on their site. I don't have a ton of information on it because I'm just not someone who uh, uses my phone uh, or my uh, iPad whenever I'm whenever I'm tattooing. In fact, I like to keep those things far away from me. I don't want to be distracted when I'm tattooing. So I don't, uh, I don't have a phone anywhere near me. I know that's becoming more common. Uh, I know that Ink Machines is also using an, an interface for your phone, like an app to handle some of the functionality. Uh, it's just not something that I'm interested in. So unfortunately, I can't give you much information on that. But the machine overall as a whole, pretty solid little machine. Yeah, I'd recommend picking one up if you're in the market for just a good overall machine that does everything pretty well. Uh, it's not going to be like uh, your perfect liner. Uh, I think that the uh, I think that something like the Numa is still a, a stronger liner. But if you want something that can absolutely line, can do soft gray wash. Uh, like I said, it drops down to about five volts. So I've even used it for a little bit of that kind of peppering effect just with a, let's say like a three liner and turning it all the way down to five volts and kind of moving my hand rapidly and getting that whipped kind of peppered effect. It, it can do that. Um, pretty solid little machine. I don't have a discount code or anything like that for you. Uh, you'll just have to go and check it out on your own. Like I said, it's, the episode isn't sponsored by AI Tinnitus. They just sent me a machine and asked for honest feedback. And so I did give them the feedback. And then I thought that uh, since I did think it was unique, particularly with this uh, case, I thought that the case was the most unique uh, part of the machine. I basically just grab made a side or tattoo side wipes, wipe my machine down really well inside and out, drop it in this uh, little case like so. Hit the sterilize button. Five minutes later, it's sterilized. Oh, one more thing that I didn't mention, uh, the batteries that it uses. It does use, I think these are pretty common. It might be the same ones that the Cheyenne uses, but this top kind of rolls off like so, and it uses this style battery that you see quite a bit these days. It comes with two of these and a charger. Um, the batteries seem to last, you know, my full tattoo day, which is about six or seven hours. I uh, haven't had, had the battery run out yet, and I think these are pretty easy to replace if they do. But uh, yeah, so there it is on the inside. Sorry, I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. Uh, pretty easy to switch batteries out. In fact, what I've been doing just to, just to be safe uh, is I, whenever I put a sleeve over the machine, I'll just tape it down. And then if I do need to change the battery or do anything, I can just pull that tape up and access the top of the machine real easily. So the battery is pretty easy to get, uh, to get in and out if for some reason you did need to replace it. What else? Well, if I didn't say anything, just ask me in the comments and I'll be sure to look at the comments and answer you. Uh, thank you guys, as always, for supporting the Fireside Tattoo Network. Go Grizzlies. Playoff season. I'll see you next time.